We will continue now with a talk by Philip Ewells from NF Core, and he will introduce how how do we plan to use right now uh, DSL two Nextflow DSL two in the in NF Core organization. So stage is yours, Phil. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thanks for the excellent overview, uh, Evan and Paolo. Uh, it's really nice to, to see you guys. I've, I've seen that talk a few times now, but it gets more polished every time. So it's good to see, uh, see a kind of the features becoming more and more stable. It's great. Um, so this talk was originally scheduled uh, to be Harshal. Um, and so he's put the slides together originally and then kind of both been working on it. And he asked if I could, I could give a talk, but it's going to be um, a bit more kind of, uh, uh, hopefully a bit more interactive than some of the, other, the earlier talks in the week. Um, so please jump in with questions as soon as you have them. Um, maybe this other will like interrupt me if there's any good ones. Um, and I'm going to try and pull Harshal in. A bit of help every now and then. <laughs> we'll see how we go. But I'll start with a quick um, kind of introduction to, to what we've done so far and uh, kind of what the perfect, uh, what the current state of play is for, for NF Core modules. So let's see if I can share my screen and uh, we'll get it cracking. Okay. So, um, yeah, so like I say, most of these slides were made by, by Herschel originally, and then I've kind of tacked, tacked my name on at the end, but really well by him. <laughs> so um, a little bit of history. Um, I think I first heard about DSL2 in um, November 18, 2018 at the, the Nextflow um, kind of meetup, uh, which was made to great fanfare and a lot of excitement. Um, one of the main arguments against using Nextflow from other, other communities was uh, the lack of this kind of feature. So it's, it's, it's kind of been highly anticipated for a long time. And when Paolo announced it, uh, it, was, it was really, really well met. Um, so that was, that was a talk by Paolo and, and a kind of a demo. And then there was a blog post in, in May of last year by Paolo kind of explaining the main features and giving some code snippets and explaining how this was going to work. We, of course, were discussing this within the NF Core community, like from day one, about how we were going to work with this, what we should do, uh, what we should aim to do, and uh, kind of what what kind of features we can build around this new syntax. And um, the, the obvious route to go was to try and create a central repository of, um, of software tool wrappers, which could be shared across different NF Core pipelines or any Nextflow pipelines um, to try and maximize code reuse. And so in July of last year, we, we started a new repository called NF Core Modules uh, to try and kind of spearhead this. There was very little code added to that pipeline, to that repository for quite a long time. Uh, there are several GitHub issues created though to discuss approaches within the community. And both there and on Slack, there's been, uh, there's been the highlight so far of, of this effort has been a, a massive amount of discussion. Uh, because once you start to really get into the details of how to implement this thing at scale across large numbers of developers in a very stable reproducible way uh, there's there's a lot to consider and it gets very complicated very quickly um, so there's lots of discussion and then we had a hackathon earlier this year in london at the, the quick organized by Harshal. And uh, there was, that was really one of the first times. There'd been some kind of um, little efforts at some of the earlier hackathons, like at SciLife Lab. Uh, but really, the one in London was the first time we made significant impact and actually started writing real code. Um, where a lot of people started writing different wrappers for new tools. So we actually had more than just FastQC in the, in the modules repository. Um, started a, a, a repository to uh, kind of play around with a, a DSL2 pipeline, which we called DSL2 pipeline test, um, and kind of tried to work out how this would work in, in reality. And we also started, well, I started building mostly um, some new continuous integration GitHub actions kind of automation to try and help some of this. Um, and missing from here is that we also started building some of the NF core tools um, software so the helper tools we started adding some new features into that which would also help developers uh, work with this new system um, that kind of trundled on for a bit had a bit of a quiet period and then a couple of weeks ago we sort of thought maybe we should try and get this in shape before this hackathon so we could work on it and so the last two weeks have been pretty frantic um, activity <laughs> on the nf core modules um, 
Harshal's done a lot of work along with other members of the core team, especially uh, to start work on converting the current NF core template, which is like our kind of central golden kind of reference point, converting that from DSL1 to DSL2. And that work is ongoing on a, on a branch on the NF core tools repository. It's going really well. Okay, so that's kind of how we got here. I'm now gonna go into a few of the discussions that we've had to talk about uh, the approaches we've decided to take uh, and why that is. Hi, now, Phil. So we, we do have a question from the audience already that is fitting to the slide. So we have had already a lot of development in DSL2. And a question is, is the DSL2 syntax considered stable enough right now to start using it in production? Excellent question. So, um, so we've had kind of competing pressures for, for modules in DSL2 since it was announced with, with Nextflow. Of course, we want to stay uh, relevant. We want to move quickly enough that we are not left behind by um, other, other people and that people who want to use DSL2 won't kind of give up on NFCore. And we also, of course, want to use all of the powerful features that come with NFCore. However, as you quite rightly pointed out, DSL2 has not been considered stable yet. And NFCore pipelines, uh, the first thing I say in every introduction talk is that they are portable and reproducible. So stability is critical before we actually push anything into 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 production here. So there's a kind quick of information a of balance there. Paolo, uh, come on, come yeah, on, quick information. Yeah, we are going to release next week. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we are there. We heard it from the man himself. <laughs> oh. So uh, exactly. So as of next week, there'll be a stable release of Nextflow. Um, we're going to hold Paolo to that, <laughs> and then. Uh, and after, after that's there, then we can start using DSL2 for real. So we're nearly there. Any more questions before I move on? Cool. So this is partly the work of this week, actually. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on Slack for those who've been kind of following it. Uh, and it's also covered in, in one of these issues on the NFCore modules repository. Uh, we've started tying down some of the, th the best practices that we're going to ask people to adhere to when writing process definition, process wrappers. Um, so, right, harsh or button here if I get any of this wrong. Module files should only define inputs and outputs. I don't completely remember what that means. Can you help me but out? We're, we, we, we initially, I think, are going to try and keep the, the process definitions as simple as possible in terms of parameter, providing parameters. Um, and so ideally, uh, we'll try and follow the next flow model, which is what I've envisaged. Um, this is still sort of up for discussion, but I think we're going with a simple approach. Um, so next flow, by definition, um, requires inputs and outputs, um, sometimes not inputs and sometimes not outputs, but I think you get the drift. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, for any tool, for example, FastQC, you'd only be providing FastQ files to FastQC, and you'd be taking zip files or HTML files as output. We won't be providing any other parameters um, within the process definition. And the main reason for that is that if we want these wrappers to be flexible and for other people to be able to reuse them, they should be able to provide their own parameters um, when they're running these module files. Um, and this at the moment seems to be the most flexible way of, of doing that. Um, and so this, the other point on that slide, which says that uh, all the other parameters um, can be provided by um, a parameter string, which can then be used by the tool. Um, so this is kind of what we're thinking at the moment um, in order to take this bit forward. Um, also, so threads and other stuff, which uh, you can use standard next level variables like task.cpus. If the tool supports multi-threading, then you, you, you can provide that. Um, as a parameter for the tool because it just makes it easier um, than having to do that and it's quite standard anyway. Um, but yeah, all other parameters ideally should come into the, the module via a string of some sort. Cool, thanks. So yeah, I guess my, my way of rephrasing that would be we don't have hard code specific options for any tool other than the mandatory arguments. And everything else which is optional, so yeah, for us you see options or trimming, distances or adapters or anything like that should be put into that single parameter, which will be just a generic string. Um, then of course the pipeline, which uses the module, then that pipeline can have whatever parameters it wants. So it can still have all the same customization that we currently have with NFCore pipelines, 
It's just that the module wrapper itself should be kept minimal. And yeah, stuff like task.cpus, because that's hard coded from, from Nextflow, that's always available. But when it's not, <laughs> but then we can check for that in the code. OK, and then the, the final one is a simple one that we should call our processes uh, by a name, which should be all uppercase. This is purely aesthetic. Uh, it just helps when you're reading a pipeline. It just makes it a bit easier to uh, kind of know what's a process and what's a, a Nextflow function, et cetera, or, or, or a variable. Um, so that's purely stylistic, but just makes life a little bit easier to read. OK, so uh, extra stuff that should be in that process. Um, currently, for those of you who have dug around within NF core pipelines, you'll have seen that we have one process which calls every single uh, tool used in the pipeline uh, with a version command and writes all of these to one file. That um, one, oh, sorry, multiple files. But those files are then used to kind of grab the versions from the software and put them into a multi QC report for reporting at the end of the pipeline. Um, now we are kind of, instead of having all of the, that, those version commands within a single process, we're asking that each process does the version call itself into a file. Um, and we'd also like to use so some bash regexes to clean those, those version strings up as much as possible. So we have a minimal file with just a version number for that tool. And then we'll collect those outputs and again, still report on them in the same way. It's just that that part of the the version reporting is delegated within the process actually doing the, the job. Um, modules should be minimal. So this is kind of simple. We just, you know, don't try to chain too many things together within a single uh, module. It's fine to have lots of modules which chain together, but, but each module should be absolutely minimal where possible. Uh, ideally, that means a single tool doing a single thing. The exception is when we need Unix pipes for really heavy lifting. Uh, for example, using SAM tools here to convert SAM to CRAM or to BAM, uh, where it was just kind of a bit unrealistic or as a large pan time penalty for creating intermediate files. So it should be minimal ex with some exceptions. Uh, this helps with a lot of stuff. It helps with simplicity of the code. It helps with main maintenance. And it also helps with, um, with software pack packaging inside the Docker containers. Okay, last one is a bit of a just mentioned because it's a shift from what we're currently doing within NF Core. So most NF Core pipelines that work with genomics data, there is a params dot single end. So you do if you want to use single end data, you do minus minus single end, and that applies to the entire workflow run. Uh, we want to shift this partly so that we don't have to handle params everywhere. Everywhere. So now we still want to have an explicit variable defining whether the data should be treated as single end or paired end. But that should be passed in in the channel as a value with the input channel alongside each set of data. This has some really big advantages. For example, you will now be able to mix paired end and single end processing within a single workflow run. Um, and will also tie into sort of more fine grained inputs in the future. Um, it is possible to infer whether data is single end or not by looking at the input channel. For example, looking at how many different files are supplied, whether it's one or whether it's two. But um, all ways is possible. I would advise from years of experience that uh, typos are easy to make within glob expressions uh, and other things are quite easy to accidentally run paired end data as single end. We used to do this years and years ago and we, we opted for that explicit param instead because it just saved us from a lot of pain. So we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna say no inference of single end it must be an explicit variable, but it should be passed in with the input channel. Thanks, Phil. So we have a question about this slide in the audience. So what about multiple processes in one module? For example, should it be one module per some tools, subcommand, or all subcommand in the same module? Yeah, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you do a live demo at the end of this, and we can have a look at what modules are there already. Um, it should be one module per subcommand. So SAM tools has multiple sub kind of folders each for as one for view as one for index and so on and so on um to keep them minimal so we can organize the directory structure so that there's just samples and then we have all the separate folders there that's that's no problem so that we keep things organized does that answer the question 
I hope that answers the question, Maxim. Otherwise, just ask again. And we also have a question from Steve. Are there any guidelines about usages of custom scripts inside modules? Um, good question. I don't think we have any guidelines on this yet. There definitely will be plenty of cases where we want custom scripts. And I don't see any problem with including them there at this point. Um, I maybe. think maybe, maybe, um, so I have been thinking about this. So at the moment, because we're still trying to find our feet, I think we will reserve NF core modules. So it makes sense to reserve NF core modules just for existing software um, that's out there. And um, so at the moment during this hackathon, actually, we're trying to re-implement the Chipseek pipeline uh, and SARIC actually um, in DSL2. And so we're, part of that is also to identify you know, problems in porting um, to DSL2 and, and to, to actually write some of these guidelines as well. Um, but at the moment, what I'm doing is um, in the pipeline repository, what I've put is um, a modules folder. And within that, I've got another subfolder called local and another one called NF core. So all the stuff coming from um, NF core modules will be in the NF core folder. And anything that is more customized and, and things that I need to keep locally, um, uh, in order to get the pipeline running, um, I'll put in local. So it's probably best to keep them there for now um, until we find our feet with all of this um, is what I would probably suggest. Yeah, that was something I meant to, in, to cover at the in, in the introduction and I completely forgot, um, apologies for that. So the NF core modules is for common tools which are possible for other people to use in other pipelines. Um, we expect NF core pipelines to have a mixture of processes from the centralized repository and also processes which are specific to just that pipeline, which are in this local folder. And of course, pipelines can carry on using scripts in the bin directory and everything as they do currently. Um, so that's kind of expected to have a mixture of both of those. Um, but yeah, I am sure that in the future we're going to come across really obvious use cases where we'll want custom scripts within NF core modules, but uh, I, we will have to figure out how to do that when we get there. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't encountered that yet. We don't have any guidelines for that yet but it will be a learning experience. Uh, your question also reminded me of another common question we get, so I'll just preempt that and answer it myself before anyone beats me to it. Um, sub workflows that Paolo described. So with DSL2, we can have module wrappers around specific tools but as processes, and we can also have these sub workflows. Um, and it's quite easy to foresee a future where it might make sense to kind of start to module up to, Let's provide those in a central repository as well. Um, we're aware of that and we're ignoring it for now. <laughs> so uh, again, that's another one of like, we'll, we'll tackle that when, when that becomes an issue where we really want to do it. I very much expect that to be something that happens, but we haven't really thought about it yet. Um, I would very much recommend that pipelines themselves in the local pipeline do set up mini workflows. Very often, at the moment, NF core pipelines are littered with minus minus skip this, minus minus skip that. Uh, the workflow scopes will make that much, much more elegant to use. If you want to use just salmon in the RNA seq pipeline, you would be able to do workflow salmon. If you want to use HiSat, star, etc. So you can imagine having these sub workflows within each pipeline working very elegantly and then having the default workflow which changes those together. Um, so sub workflows, yes, definitely in pipelines, certainly and probably in the future in modules, but we don't know how yet. Any more questions? All right, I'll crack on. Oops. Software dependencies. This is something where those of you who have followed the discussion in NF Core about modules uh, might be a bit confused to see what's on this slide because we've changed our minds a few times. <laughs> um, Currently, NF core pipelines, we recommend that a pipeline has a single environment file with all of the different software requirements and a single Docker wrapper where possible. Um, this was an early decision. And the main reason was that a lot of people were using NF core pipelines, especially at the start, were using Singularity. Uh, and basically, if the pipeline had kind of 20 different containers, you had to have 20 different Singularity images and the file size started to get quite large. Um, however, that in some cases causes issues. Uh, it means it's more difficult to install software if they require different versions of Python, things like this. 
And so really as a developer, especially, it's much easier to work with a single process, a single Docker file per process. With shared modules, which we're talking about here, this is just mandatory. There's no other way to do it. We have to have a single Docker file per process. So that kind of forces our hand. Um, initially, we thought about having, about recommending that we use uh, other publicly available Docker files. For example, biocontainers is a big one that hopefully will be a talk by Bjorn about biocontainers later in the week. Um, we're still thinking about that. Um, but for now, because we still want support for Conda, we recommend that every process has its own environment file, which will hopefully be very small, just be the channel declaration, and then maybe a single tool in there with a pinned version, and also a Docker file alongside that, which again looks like all the same NF core Docker files we have at the moment, which are very, very minimal, just take the environments and build a Conda environment within a Docker image. And then we will build those Docker images ourselves and use them within the pipelines. It's still some outstanding questions about how we're actually going to do this, especially with versioning. If anyone has any bright ideas, we would I'd really like uh, some ideas on how to solve solve the versioning issue with Docker Docker files within um, within the pipeline code. Um, but this is how we're going to start off at least, and we will explore other approaches later on. But for now, this is the easiest and the most stable way to do it. We've used Docker Hub so far for everything within NF Core, but we're probably going to use Doc, uh, GitHub Docker repository uh, going forward with NF Core modules. It allows us to have multiple um, different images, Docker images within a single repository, which is really nice. The automation works well, and we're kind of centralizing everything into GitHub, which just simplifies much of the management. Uh, at the moment, for example, if you want a new, new uh, pipeline, one of us in the admins has to go and create a Docker Hub repository for you. So as if we're using GitHub directly for everything, it's a bit more streamlined. OK, so environment and Docker file probably went into too much detail there. Sorry, but that's, that's how we're expecting that to work. Uh, yeah, explicitly pin the software versions in the Conda file. Um, there's a lot of questions and a lot of discussion about how versioning of NF Core modules will work. So um, I'm going to talk about this more, I think, on the next slide, where we talk about how we're going to pull modules into the workflow. But effectively, what we want to have is on the NF Core modules repository, the shared repository, um, we'll try and track the latest versions of those tools. So if a release comes out, that will be updated on the NF Core modules repository. A new Docker image will be built with a new version, and the new pipeline code will be automatically tested against it. Uh, and that will be committed as a new, a new commit to the NF Core modules repo. If your pipeline needs a new version, you go to NF Core modules and you do it. You don't do it within your own pipeline. Then everyone benefits, and it also keeps this very strong link between modules and your pipeline. Uh, I'll talk a bit more in a second about the details of how that will work. OK. Um, we need to document what we're doing in NF Core modules so people know what's there and how to use it. Um, this is slightly up for grabs, but the suggestion so far is that we write a YAML file, uh, just a structured text file which sits with each uh, module and kind of describes what the module does, what the inputs and outputs are, and, and who wrote it. Uh, we're not doing anything with this yet, but the intention is in the future that we can use this for automatic documentation, uh, maybe some kind of validation and testing, um, things like that you can imagine. So um, we're kind of pretty much stolen much of the, the syntax from Conda YAML files here. And we just kind of set this out very early on as a, a, a template so that we collect this information from word go at least. Um, GitHub Actions. So this is, uh, we used to use Travis. Now we're using GitHub Actions for everything for continuous integration testing. Uh, just like all the NF Core pipelines, every module should have its own CI with a minimal test data set. This is one of the main reasons, actually, from the early stage why we wanted to use modules, is that we have kind of end-to-end -end testing of pipelines, but we really wanted module-like unit testing of the specific steps within a pipeline. So we actually run each individual step by itself and ideally actually check the outputs. Mostly at the time, moment, we just run a pipeline, make sure it doesn't crash, and then have to manually vet that the inputs and outputs look right before releases. But now we want to actually check and validate the file from each, each uh, module as it runs. Um, unlike other pipelines where we have a test data sets repository, we've decided very recently that we think the test data should be on the modules repository. 
And it, ideally, if you just need some first few files or something, you should share them between different modules so that we don't load it unnecessarily. Okay, so this is roughly what the NFCore modules repository looks like currently, the directory structure. We have the kind of basic stuff like the readme and the GitHub workflows. And then we have a directory called software. This used to be called tools. And then Harshal pointed out that I keep calling everything tools in NFCore. <laughs> and it was very confusing. So we renamed it to software. Um, so within software, then we have the names of the main tools which we've, we're supporting. So here we've got PWA, we've got FastQC, we've got SAM tools. And then you can see in some cases we have subdirectories nested under there, which is what I described earlier. So the different SAM tools commands, for example. Uh, and these can be nested arbitrarily. Then at the kind of the leaf, leaf folders, the end of those folders, we have what looks like kind of a mini Nextflow workflow almost. We have a main.nf file, which just contains that at one process. We have the meta file, which um, describes everything going on there. And we have a test action.yaml file, which is used for CI. I'm not actually sure if that quite how that's used currently. I think that might be wrong. Um, but and, and there's also missing environment and Docker files here. But you get the general picture of it here. Each of those folders sh should also have a test directory, which will contain actual an actual Nextflow workflow, uh, as well as all the input and output test data, which will be used to validate that unit. Right, importing. This is where I said I was going to come back to a bit more detail. Um, uh, so, Phil, now that we you could go to the previous slide again, so we do have a question from Maxim, and. Mm -hmm. It is how can we specify the version of a given program within an NFCore module? I'm about to tell you. <laughs> um, so, versioning and importing are one and the same thing, basically, or at least we're very closely tied together. Um, this is probably the, the single issue that's had the most discussion so far, and uh, but I'm pretty confident we're coming to a conclusion now. If you look at that issue thread, there, it's very long. <laughs> There's a lot of discussion there. Um, and we've have gone through a lot of different suggestions, and we've even tested out several of these. So if you go and look at that old DSL2 pipeline test repository, someone dug it out earlier. We actually deleted it from NFCore, but I forgot that I still had my personal fork floating around. It's outdated. Don't look at it anymore. Um, but in the early days, we tried using Git submodules. This makes quite a lot of sense. You just say, OK, we've got the modules repository. I just want to use that here. Uh, and then I'll be able to access any of those module wrappers. The downside are that when you clone the repository, you need to clone with submodules, git clone minus minus submodules, recursive initialization, which is kind of a hassle. It doesn't happen by default with git. Needs extra flags. It's just kind of liable to cause issues. The other problem is that then you, you can't have a submodule for parts of a repository. So you have to pull the entire NFCore modules repository, which could get very large uh, and could be a bit problematic. Uh, the nail in the coffin for this one is that you can only import that repository once. And so that means you have the NFCore modules repository at a single commit across all of those different software wrappers. And they're all locked to the same version. And uh, that's important because uh, you might want to have different versions of different tools running. And we'll do that by taking different versions of the NFCore modules repository. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, another suggestion was to have a library of modules. It's kind of very attractive given the, the, the possibilities here and where we could host modules on an existing library infrastructure. The two that came up were NPM, Node Package Manager, and of course Conda, which a lot of people are very familiar with. Um, we even got as far as making a Conda channel called NFCore, which is that currently empty, uh, kind of ready to have these tool wrappers. And uh, we have a, a branch on tools which has a working implementation of using um, Conda. Um, so basically, using Conda works. The, the downside of using Conda is that it's um, complex. It adds a lot of complexity into the automation and to the management of the modules. Uh, we started looking into how we could use Bioconda utils to kind of manage some of this. And really, it was going to turn into a kind of a massive job to really make sure all of this works. It's entirely possible we don't go down this, future, this road in the future uh, if things start getting really big and unmanageable by ourselves. Um, 
and it does have some advantages but for now we've decided to kind of put that on the shelf and come back to it later if we need to. One of the main arguments for using Conda is uh, dependency management but it's an, an important concept here to remember is you're pulling in flat files from NFCore modules into your pipeline and you pull those in in chunks so there should never really be cross dependencies certainly as for someone for running your pipeline. Your, the person running your pipeline just grabs that flat file repository and runs it all in one go. So dependency interconnectivity should be fairly complex unless we start getting very complex with um, sub-workflows. Okay, so what we ended up with was uh, basically a homebrew solution using the NF Core tools uh, Python package. And um, on now merge into the dev branch, which will soon be released in version 1.10 is kind of a skeleton early version of a new suite of commands called NF Core modules. Um, and I'm going to just quickly demo that. So um, hopefully you can all see my, my prompt here. I'm just in an empty directory called demo. If I make a new, um, a new uh, pipeline with NF Core create, I can just call it demo, demo pipeline. Uh, what this does is it takes the NF Core um, kind of template and just builds me a skeleton workflow to start from scratch. Uh, you can see it's made a folder here called NF Core Demo. And if I look in here, I've got my main main.nf and my next flow config and everything. This is a DSL1 pipeline, but currently got that work going on I described of converting as template to DSL2. So what I can do now is also start to play around with these. Um, if I do NF Core minus minus help, you'll see I have a new command here, modules, which has not been there before. And if I do NF Core modules help, you see it comes with its own subcommands. Um, and these three don't do anything yet. They'll just tell you it's not yet implemented, but these two do work to some degree. So as the two ones do, they fetch the available modules, from the NF Core modules repository and list them. And this one installs one of those into your pipeline, which basically just means it copies the relevant files. So if I do NF Core modules list, we will hopefully get a nice list. There we go. Of the different available tools. We've got Bowtie, we've got the SAM tools, different wrappers here, we've got FastQC, and so on. I've got my pipeline here, remember. If I do NF Core modules install, I give it my pipeline directory and I say I want to install FastQC. It will go off, it will check that it's a pipeline folder that I gave it. It will check that the FastQC exists in the NF Core modules repository. And if I go into here, I can do git status. And you can see I've got a new folder here, which has not been seen before. If I look in um, in this folder, you can see it's copied all of the files for this wrapper. And so then I could use those within my pipeline. I just import from module software first you see. Um, this probably will need fiddling with a bit. I just realized that Harshal said he had these tools within an NF core subfolder. So I need to add that. But you can see the concept here. This Python script is very simple. It's just looking what's available on the GitHub repository and then copying those files and avoiding the test folders and stuff like that. Uh, what will come in then is more validation to check that um, we'll, we'll make sure that when you push changes to your pipeline that you haven't changed these files at all. They should match exactly to NF Core modules. If you want to change something, you should do it on the NF Core modules repository. And also to like update them and make sure that they're locked against specific git hashes of the NF Core modules repository. So eventually, coming back to your question, Maxime, about versioning tools. On NF Core modules, you will have a history for each tool. So we'll start when it's first added, that will have its own version with a commit hash of the code and of the Docker image. And then each time it's updated, you'll have new commit hashes for that tool uh, and new Docker, new Docker images for that version. So we'd recommend always that you always just update all of your modules and just have them all of the latest commit of NF Core modules, which will then also have the latest versions of those software. But if for whatever reason you want to have a specific earlier version, you just pin that git hash, git hash for that wrapper. And then you'll have that software version and that version of the, the, um, the tool. This also means that when you make your pipeline, you can be sure and confident that it stays stable. It doesn't matter if people start updating NF Core modules. Firstly, you've copied those files out of NF Core modules, so they're contained within your pipeline and stable. And secondly, they're tied to a specific hash of the NF Core modules repository. 
Okay, any questions before I move on? <laughs> I've either put everyone to sleep or everyone's got a headache. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll move on. I think we're nearly at the end now. Yeah, okay, so this is there. Yeah, that is the end now. Okay, cool. Right, Harshal, did I miss anything? No, I think I think that's that's about where we are with with DSL two at the moment. Um, if people do want to get involved, we're having a bit of a sprint at the moment. Like I said, um, on Slack uh, in the hackathon channel uh, for DSL two. So get involved um, and yeah, thank you for listening. So thank you everybody. So now we can have a discussion question. There were a couple of questions that I didn't ask yet because they were not directly related to the slides, but you have now the chance of asking them yourself to any of the speakers today. So raise your hand here in Zoom if you have some questions, please. Do you think you could repeat the questions there, Gazella, which are written in the chat? Because there's a couple sat there at the moment. Uh, yes, I can also repeat the questions. So a question to Paolo. Are there optional and or named inputs for modulized processes like for outputs with emit, let's say I create a process for my tool, which has thousands of parameters, a lot of them optional. It could be nice if I could just call my, yeah, it's, it's difficult to read because there's a bit of code in between the lines. <laughs> so if that person could speak up themselves here or raise their hands, I can unmute them. They can probably ask themselves better. Uh, yes, this is uh, an open problem. There are some ideas, but it's not going to be available in the, the upcoming release next week. But yes, this is something that need to be, be need to be solved in the next row, uh, to to have a better handling for optional input output. So not next week, but hopefully soon. Okay, perfect. I hope that this answers your questions. We had also another question before. I was wondering how difficult it could be to have multiple pipe connected script blocks per process task. Yeah, I can go, I'll have a go on that one. So the idea would here would be imagine that you had several processes that you wanted uh, or several process definitions that you wanted to run at once. So at the moment, each next load task is submitted out to the infrastructure that you need to send it on. Um, so for example, if you're going to send that out, it would each go onto a virtual machine on AWS batch or um, a node in your cluster. Now the idea would be that if you could link um, two of these files together or two of these processes together automatically, you would no longer need to transfer the output uh, files to the input of the next process. There's some ideas on doing this. In some ways, it would break, a, um, Google could potentially break the pipeline across different infrastructure because if you were doing this, if that could only happen on some infrastructure, um, it, it may break some pipelines. So there are also other ways of having be able to, uh, imagine being able to stream the data from one process to another. And these are all open ideas as well and, and things that we will be working on um, because as, as, the, um, as the person who asked the question has said, this would, this would make things much faster. You wouldn't have to have intermediate files. You wouldn't have to necessarily write to disk um, and, and you could like, really speed up a lot of the, the execution time. So it's a very good point, but something that we'll, we'll be working on um, for the next little bit. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Evan. We have another question from Rat. Any chance of using version tags as well as commit hashes for modules? Yeah, I can say that. 
Um, it's not the you're not the first person to ask. Rad. <laughs> it's come up quite a few times. Um, we've thought about this, and it's it might happen. Um, we have the software version tags in the environment file, and um, so we do have that available. The downside is if uh, someone wants to add some more functionality to the wrapper code itself, not leave the tool version unchanged, but change the, the process wrapper, uh, then that process wrapper needs to have its own version as well. So then you're maintaining the, the software version, wrapper version, and the Docker version. Um, and I kind of felt that this was very complicated. So my, my gut feeling is that, that in the end, we're going to have a single identifier, which is going to be the Git hash. That contains everything. It contains a wrapper. It contains a software the container version. Contains everything. Whether we add some kind of helper functionality, which finds a software version and converts that into a Git hash at a later date, that might be possible. Um, but it's not going to be there straight away. Uh, for now, just use the Git hash. I'm hoping, to be honest, I would like to try and push everyone to use the latest version of all tools all the time. So um, really, I'm hoping that all this question of versioning is going to be a little bit mute, because you'll just run NF Core modules update all, and it will just update all your modules to the latest version. Um, and you check it works, and then you know, everyone's happy. But of course, there will be some circumstances where you're forced to use older versions of software, and we need to make that possible. Perfect. Thank you, Phil. There is a similar question from Maxim. Could there be named inputs for processes, as there is also now, as, as also now named outputs exist? Maybe that's more a question for Evan or Paolo. Yeah, I think it's for Paolo there. Yeah, I've heard that for me. <clears throat> um, no, at least mm, I think that will confuse even more. It's already quite it start to be complicated. Maybe the the the, the, the syntax, uh, I fear that that will open the possibility to have too many options. I don't know. So short question, I would say no. Long question, <laughs> I don't know. Maxim says, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from our audience today? So Rad is commenting, I would argue against latest in favor of explicit versions and a way to have both version and hash similar to how you have tech and the JS for Docker images. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I think we I think we're agreeing. Um, the the digest. I mean, a Docker tag resolves against a digest. At the end of the day, you always have a specific hash, um, and it will be the same for NF Core modules. At the end of the day, you will always have a specific hash, and we might add kind of nice front functionality to to make that easier to use in the future. But um, first, we're going to start with the hash and, and go from there. I want to add a bit more about now option, oh, optional and name it input parameter because this is actually uh, is related to, to, to the optional input. Now, because if you allow people to, to have a process in which the input are specified not with the position, but with the name, you can specify one, imagine that you have a process with many inputs and you specify just one with the name and then you omit the other. So maybe if we have a good way to specify <clears throat> the default um, value for, and then and therefore the optional value for, for some inputs, we could have also a way to manage name and parameter because they are linked to. So maybe in the future. Would, would a map go anywhere towards solving that, Paolo? Yeah, the, the map is doing that. The problem is that what is the value for something that you don't specify? Now we don't tell, no? So we should have also a way to specify a default value 
for a process uh, input. But that became a bit weird because I'm not sure that they have much sense having default for a default value. You can have some specific cases, but that is more an optional input, in my opinion. Instead, you should specify a, a, a default value for each input. Otherwise, when you specify, when you invoke the process, each time you have to specify the name and the actual value. The name and the actual value, that make very verbose the, 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 the composition of the, of the pipeline, I think. Or could the default value be initialized as false or, so, or null or something? And unless or, it's or the can you repeat? Sorry. Could the default value for any given input be null or false or something unless it's overwritten um, oh. by being provided to the process? Yeah, um, a default to zero. How to say? I don't know. Hmm. I think that will open. Ooh, so create more confusion I fear. A couple of people have chimed in on the chat here and I, I was thinking the same thing. We could uh, potentially try and steal how Python does this. And I guess other languages as well. That if no name is given, you can just use the order of arguments. And if names are specified, then, then use those. Um, but maybe this is getting a bit in depth for this, for this forum. Uh, we can take this on, on, on Slack for a bit more. Yeah, that could be an option even though I'm not sure how much will improve the, the experience with the language. I don't know. It seems to implement this then is a big, a big work. So I prefer to focus on other stuff. Um, there's a, sorry, there's a, just hop on a question here about um, from Steve about how DSL2 works with params um, and whether basically we will lose the ability to use params to kind of customize the way that script blocks run and things like this. <clears throat> yes, basically the, the model inherit the params from the cooling model. So you can use params as any, in any other script. Uh, basically the model will receive all the params that are in the invoking script, but you can still override if you need, when you invoke, when you make the inclusion. There are some examples in the in documentation. So, yeah. and we will, we will be making use of this quite a bit in NFCore modules, as we saw um, in my talk earlier. I don't know if you remember, it said params.module name arguments. So we're using a, a regular params there to, to customize the script block already just in a kind of standardized way. Um, so yeah, params will continue to be a, a core feature of, of pipelines even with DSL2. All right, there seems not to be any more questions. So if there are no further questions, I'd like to thank everybody who contributed to this session. It was very interesting to have this discussion. And if people would like to contribute to us porting all our NFCO pipelines to DSL2, join us now, join us for the rest of the week. And yeah, this way you can make an impact on NFCore.